What's going on A Push Peeps? Video number 21, the market revolution. You must be familiar with this term. Great short answer slash essay topic, especially if it's a topic on the economy. All right, so let's give a shout out to Mr. Pell's class. Thank you for your support, Mr. Pell. You're soon see you're a great teacher and amazing at guitar too. So best of luck to you and your students this year. All right, so the market revolution. It was a revolution in transportation, farming, and production of goods. So we have a lot going on in this definition. We also have an increased use of canals, such as the Erie Canal here, which connects Albany to Buffalo. Roads, such as the National Road or Cumberland Road. And then you have steamboats and railroads, which are becoming popular during this time too. And we have a switch from subsistence to cash crop farming. So more farmers are growing food to sell, not necessarily just to grow for themselves to live off of. Goods were produced increasingly outside the home. And this is especially true for textiles. The idea that goods are no longer being made in ho at home. They're being made outside at places like factories. And this occurs prior to the Civil War. And that time period is called antebellum America. Everybody circle antebellum for me. This means it is prior to the Civil War. Okay, so what are some innovations during the market revolution? Well, for transportation, we have roads, as I mentioned, such as the Cumberland Road, canals, such as the Erie Canal, and the steamboat, popularized by Robert Fulton, pictured here. For agricultural improvements for farmers, we have things like the cotton gin, invented by Eli Whitney. The goal of this was to separate cotton at a much faster rate from its seeds and he actually envisioned that this would decrease the need for slavery but unfortunately this is going to make slavery that much more significant in the south the steel plow will benefit the Med midwest where farmers could break the soil and grow more food and the mccormick reaper will be used to increase harvesting efficiency they will get the crops out of the ground at a faster rate Technological innovations include interchangeable parts, again by Eli Whitney. Think of cookie cutter parts that are identical. So if a part breaks on a good, you can just easily replace it as opposed to going back to the blacksmith and having that person make you a new part. And the telegraph, which will increase communication between areas. Okay, so some government actions during the market revolution. Well, State and federal governments would often help fund roads, canals, and railroads, but it mattered what type it was and where the funding would come from. So the Erie Canal was paid entirely by New York State because it is solely in New York State. That is an example of intra, I-N-T-R-A, state trade. That means it's within a state. So if a construction project only benefits one state, oftentimes that state would pay for it. If it benefited multiple states, that would be paid by the federal government. The Cumberland Road connects many different areas of the country. And that's an example of interstate trade. Often, the North and Midwest were more closely linked together than the South with its large plantations. The South was really kind of left behind with these infrastructure projects. Each region became more reliant on each other and traded more with each other. In the Midwest, places like Cincinnati developed. They're gonna focus on pigs in particular, and the nickname for the city will be Porkopolis, so they will grow pigs and really ship it throughout the country. The South is going to focus on cotton and then send that cotton to the North in textile factories, and the North will focus on manufacturing goods, and we will have trade between these three regions. But because infrastructure was built up more in the Midwest and the North, we'll see them benefit more than the South does. So let's talk about corporations and the emergence of them. These are when companies form a charter by paying a fee and the owners are not liable for the losses of the company, they would just lose their investment. So if you buy stock in a company, you are an owner of the company, but you're not liable for what the company does. You're just liable for the money you invest in. And this led to the selling of stock and companies could raise large amounts of cash by selling portions of their company. This will help lead to the emergence of factories where men and women began to work outside the home in factories in large numbers. You see cities popping up around factories. They're no longer reliant on sub semi-subsistence farming because so many farm goods are being produced, especially in the Midwest. Textile mills were often located near water and these goods were often traded to distant markets, specifically in 
Europe. It's not just the US they're trading goods with, but also Europe. Make sure you know that phrase, distant markets. Okay, so an example of a factory system is the Lowell factory in Massachusetts. This is where farmers' daughters would work in the Lowell factory system. So if you're a farmer and you have a young daughter, you may be working on the farm all day, but your daughter would go and work at the Lowell factory for a couple years. These were often young, late teens, early 20s, single women. And here are a couple pictured here. They would work for a short time, couple years, and they would save money, at which point that many of them would either get married or move back home. But they would be able to have some cash from working those couple years. So life at Lowell was very organized. Women lived in boarding houses when they weren't working. They, they were maintained by their owners. And the workers had a curfew and they were required to attend church. So there were strict guidelines for women to follow while they were working outside the home. And they often did the same task over and over in the factory. So they would have one simple job and they would do that over and over. So where are the impacts of the market revolution and manufacturing? Well, we have a growing middle class an increase in prosperity and standard of living for a good portion of the population. So we have a growing middle class, people are getting wealthier, and a lot of people see their prosperity increasing. We also have an emergence of a business elite. These factory owners and these managers of factories become very wealthy. That will help lead to an unequal distribution of wealth where we still have a lot of poor workers and a large portion of the population still remain poor, whether they were poor farmers or poor workers in a factory. So let's talk about gender and family roles. Many poor families stopped farming and moved to cities and to work in factories. You would see children as young as six to eight working in factories alongside their parents. So if they were too poor to afford a farm, they would pack up their whole family and move to work in a factory. Married middle-class women were not expected to work outside the home. So if you were married, your expectation if you're middle class was to stay in the home and raise your family. That is an example of the cult of domesticity. And here's a book that helped reinforce it. This magazine, it was called Gotti's Ladies Book, which reinforced this notion of the cult of domesticity. So everybody circle and star cult of domesticity for me, please. This is the idea that upper middle class women were expected to focus on their families and instilling American virtues in their children. They were not expected to work outside the home. They were not expected to be involved in politics. They were expected to take care of the house and live in a separate sphere from men. So they would join voluntary clubs and organizations. We'll talk about that in a future video in which women will join organizations to protest slavery and alcohol. And women would often stay out of politics and they would just focus on domestic issues. At least that was the expectation under the cult of domesticity. If women did work, their options would be limited to professions such as nursing and teaching, things that were seen as feminine during that time. What was the market revolution? Know some impacts on the economy, transportation systems, and gender and family roles. Very important, that gender and family roles aspect. And innovations during the market revolution. Be able to identify several of them. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you back here for video number 22. Best of luck this year and have a good day.